If there's one theme that has drawn itself through the entirety of the Persona series since day one, Ying Ying Psychology and Demons Nonwithstanding, it's the series' repeated use of ghost stories and urban legends as a narrative device, and sometimes even as a gameplay element. Literally, the first scene in the very first game has our main characters trying their hands at what pretty much amounts to a room-sized Ouija board. No surprise, given how popular these sorts of stories are in Japan. I mean, there is a reason Japanese horror movies are pretty much considered a genre all of their own. This theme also makes a lot of sense, considering it an association to the game's borrowings from analytical psychology, since rumors and myths of all kind can be seen as an expression of the country's collective cultural unconscious, very much in line with Jung's ideas. This interpretation is only helped by scenes such as this one, where Nella Tota outright calls rumors the collective wish of people, or this page of the Persona 3 Club book, where Kutsky claims that information spread on the internet has been an important tool for feeding the collective death wish Erebus embodies. Or this scene in Persona 4 where Izanami claims the Midnight Channel was her way of reflecting mankind's own desires back at them. I think my point is clear, right? Anyway, it's Halloween, the season of all things spooky and supernatural. So what better time to take a better look at all of the most spooky ghost stories, rumors and urban legends that have ever made the rounds in the Persona version of Japan. Hello, I am Nannyline and these are 7 rumors from the Persona series and their roots in real life urban legends. That's one from each Persona game, spin-off sort of included. Literally the first thing we saw in any Persona game, ever. Hidehiko Uesugi coaxes his pulse this includes you and the majority of your future party members into playing a game that involves four people standing in the corners of an empty room, one after another walking over into the next corner, tapping the shoulder of the next person, calling for the persona to come. That sounded wrong. Calling for persona to come. Then the person whose shoulder has been tapped moves to the next corner, rinse, repeat. Eventually, this results in awkward CGI, I mean, a, a ghost girl appearing, lightning striking everyone down, and bam, Philemon hands out personas like Butterfly Oprah. This little witch roll is very directly based on a ghost story from real life Japan. However, unlike the Persona version, where the rumor claims the game is supposed to predict the future, in the original story, the shoulder tapping Carousel's purpose was very explicitly not dying. Context. The story of Square, uh, no, not that Square, begins with five members of a hiking club going up on a mountain and getting lost in a blizzard. One of them gets hit on the head by a rock, dies. The others manage to carry the dead comrade to an empty hut sit there for a while, then decide, well, buddy count of one is quite enough for an after-school activity, dear chaps. Let's try to not get ahead of ourselves here. So they keep each other awake by walking from corner to corner and, what else, tapping each other's shoulders. Only after a few rounds of that, the last one of them, let's call him D, realizes, wait a minute, if A is in corner B, B is in corner C, C is in corner D, and D is in corner A. Then whose shoulder did I just tap? Eventually they decide that this mysterious fifth person, let's call them F, was their dear fallen friend, who'd come back from the dead to help them out with staying awake and alive by lightly tapping someone's shoulder. Because that's what friendship is all about. And no, I have no idea what this has to do with Philemon. Or Personas. Or anything. But hey, at least the ghost in this one is benevolent. That's more than I can say for pretty much anything else on this list. The Persona to Duology has no shortage of creepy rumors, given that there's an entire game mechanic that involves gathering and spreading stories around town. However, none is quite as unsettling and familiar as the one that pretty much kicks off the entire plot. And when I say familiar, I mean familiar to Japanese players, because again, this one is based directly on an actual existing Japanese urban legend. In Persona 2 Innocent Sin, Choker is an entity that one can contact by calling their own cell phone's number and chanting Choker, Choker, come here. Choker will then appear behind the caller and grant their wishes, unless they don't have any, in which case he'll pretty much just steal their minds and erase them from our plane of existence. Neat. 
There's another version of Choker and Eternal Punishment, who's pretty similar, except this one only grants wishes that involve murdering people, but we're not gonna focus on this one right now. P2IS's Choker is based on the urban legend of Satoru Kun, which goes as follows. Grab a 10 yen coin and search for a payphone. You can't use any other types of phones or coins. It has to be a 10 yen coin and a payphone. Satoru is very specific like that. Anyway, once you've located both of these, call your own cell phone and wait for the call to connect. Then try to not feel too embarrassed about yourself as you chant into the phone, Satoru, Satoru, come to me. By the way, this is also where the Persona, Persona, come to me chant from the previous number on this list comes from. That wasn't originally in Square. Anyway, once you're done chanting, you hang up the call and turn off your cell phone completely. If you did everything correctly, within 24 hours, you should start getting calls from Satoru on your turned off cell phone, informing you where he is right now. Once he says, I'm right behind you, you can ask him a question, any question, and he'll tell you the answer. Did my husband cheat on Who me? Who killed John F. Kennedy? What's the ultimate question? Do I look fat in this shirt? Anything. There's only a few things you gotta watch out for. A. Never turn around to look at Satoru. B. Never be as smart as and ask Satoru a question you already know the answer to. And finally, C. Never ask Satoru more than one question. What happens if you break any of these rules? Oh, you'll just get mysteriously spirited away. To hell! I'm cheating a little with this one, since it's literally just a real-life ghost story that happens to appear in the game as a side quest, but I just like this one too much to not mention it. Japan has a rich, fascinating culture of school ghost stories, which has spawned quite fascinating academic discourse in the field of Japanese studies, and also a terrible anime series, which is not fascinating, unless you watch its English dub, which is, quite frankly, a gift from God. There's nothing to be afraid of, Pichu. Monsters only get evil people like Republicans and we're not old enough to vote! Anyway, a common trend among Japanese ghost stories is the appearance of female ghosts in weird places doing terrible things to people for various reasons. This is one of them. Waco is a ghost without legs. How she died varies depending on who's telling the story, but the most popular version seems to be after World War II, American soldiers raped her, then she jumped onto a train track and killed herself. Wonderful. Anyway, she'll appear to you when you enter a bathroom, often at night. She'll ask you, where are my legs? You're supposed to answer, at Meishin Expressway. She'll ask you, who told you that? You'll answer, Waco Kashima did. If she's feeling especially persistent that day, she'll also say, give me your arms. I'm still using those. Give me your legs. I still need those. Or, do you know my name? To a question, the right answer is the masked demon of death. If you answer any of these wrong, she'll dismember and kill you so the two of you can go on tour together. Oh, also it's said she'll appear to you within one month of first hearing about the story. You're welcome. In Persona 3, your first encounter with one of the most adorable members of your party also happens to be one of the creepiest freaking party member introductions in all of the franchise. Before you ever even get to meet her, Junpei's theatrics and the Shinjiro Aragaki rumor mill are so nice as to inform you that Fuka is considered A. Dead. B. A ghost haunting Gekukan High School. And C. Responsible for inflicting two of her worst bullies on the mortal coil with a hefty bout of apathy syndrome. Of course, it quickly turns out that none of this is true and actually she's just been trapped in a parallel dimension filled with blood-hungry monsters for the past couple of weeks because that's, you know, so much better. But the spread of those rumors at Gekokan isn't surprising, given how common this exact kind of ghost stories is around Japanese schools. One such example is the story of Hikiko-san. She appears on rainy days, wearing a tattered white kimono and carrying no umbrella. Behind her, she is dragging something that looks like a mannequin on first glance. But if you look closer, it's actually a kid. <laughs> if you happen to meet her, she'll knock you out and drag you behind her. On and on. Until you finally die. Then she'll dump your corpse somewhere. Now, here's the good news. Hikiko only targets school bullies. So hopefully all of you guys should be safe. Hopefully. That's because Hikiko is actually the ghost of a girl who was either bullied to death or into suicide. Either way, the place where she dumps her victims tends to be the same one where she herself died. Her motivation is to rid the world of the very bullies who've made her life a living hell. So we 
remember, kids, if you don't want to get brutally murdered one stormy, stormy night, play nice. Also, Hikiko's full name is often given as Hikiko Mori. Hikiko Mori. As an agoraphobic with terrible social anxiety. Very subtle. Okay, these ones are so numerous and varied, I couldn't really pick out a single one, even if I tried. Both the Midnight Channel in Persona 4 and the cursed video in Persona 4 Dancing All Night are based on a long-lasting trend of urban legends about screens or radios showing or playing things that they aren't supposed to show or play and causing effects to the people viewing them. These effects can be either extremely desirable or extremely bad. One example I found is a story about a man who found the Chris show at night on a channel that was meant to show anime. In said Chris show, people admitted to committing various awful crimes. Finally, the man himself was asked about his crimes by the Chris show. When he refused to answer, he was tossed off his balcony and died. Another example is the story of the Red Room, a pop-up that will appear on your computer after you attempt to research the story. Well, sucks to be me, I guess? It says that after you attempt to close the pop-up several times, it will ask you if you like the Red Room. Then you'll kill yourself and paint your room red with your own blood. So if I go on another six months hiatus after this, you'll know what happened. This one has got to be cheating, but I found it relevant, so here I go. Of course, Persona Q is full of school ghost stories. I mean, one of its major plot points is about a literal school ghost. But the one that stands out the most to me is the legend claiming that those who hear the long idle school bell strike shall die. A story very similar to another rumor early in Persona 2, where hearing the school bell while wearing the school emblem would result in one's face getting terribly disfigured. This story is, sadly, not one I could find a direct real-life equivalent to, uh, but I do have something else. Dailies and Mental Chen, the tale of the dream school. There's a guy, let's call him K. One night K has a very strange dream. He's wandering around a school he doesn't know, full of closed paths he can't go. The school is built like a labyrinth that goes nowhere and the hallways seem to be looping, which K finds very strange indeed. Now, unfortunately for K, he neglected to retrieve the key for the emergency exits and leave through there, because that might just have saved him. Instead, he stumbled upon a room full of dismembered dancing students. Yes, dismembered and dancing. It's a weird school like that. Anyway, at that point, Kay's fate was pretty much sealed and he stayed trapped in the dream world forever and never woke up. The end. Stories like these are a nice potential source of the Persona series liking for school hallways turning into an impenetrable maze of death, as well as the tidbit about never waking up in the cursed videos rumor from Persona 4 Dancing All Night. I, on the other hand, can only wonder if this means that I should be very worried about my recent tendency to flash back to the horrors of my high school years at night. Again, if I disappear, you know where I am! And finally, for the grand finale! Drum roll, please! And the rumor is... You, my friend! Yes, you, the Phantom Thieves! Oh, wait, you thought I meant the real you? Uh, no, sorry, you were just someone I don't know. Carrying on! Well, Persona 5 is, for the most part, surprisingly light on the traditional sort of ghost story we've been getting used to from previous installments, it gives us one big urban legend right there in the premise. You! The Phantom Thieves, as an unexplained supernatural force granting the pleas of the oppressed and punishing the very minds of those corrupt. How do you contact this mysterious power for its aid? Why, we are an internet message board, of course. 
an urban legend for the modern age indeed. Reflective of current trends or not, the way how the world's belief in the Phantom Thief strengthens and weakens their power over Tokyo over the course of the game, something that is actually measured with an in-game meter, is very reminiscent of how rumors work in Persona 2. And while you may say now, the Phantom Thieves aren't an urban legend in the game's world, they are 100% fact. Well, the same is true for almost everything else on this list now, is it? The Persona series is and has always been a story about thoughts altering reality, and what thoughts are more powerful than those passed on from person to person, shaping a story so well known it already seems real at times. In a way, Nyala Totep was right. Rumors, myths and urban legends are reflections of how we, as a collective, perceive our world, how we fear it and what we want from it. Now if only the collective unconscious could keep me from suffering the dire consequences of all this forbidden knowledge I have on earth.